Welcome to Eye on the Money, the television show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as make your money work for you. Now remember, our collaboration with Centonomy continues and in fact, we're entering the second phase of the partnership and we're going to start to roll out a couple of episodes on relationships and money. And as a matter of fact, on the show today, we discuss couples and money. Now, arguments about money hamper many marriages. When you consider that about a third of adults with partners report that money is a very big source of conflict in their relationships, it's no wonder that financial problems are a leading cause of divorce. Now, what you may not know is that the challenges can actually start even before you say, I do. Now, joining me on the show to discuss practical tips to help you pave the road to better marital finances and relationships is none other than Maureen. Radoli, the head of, pers of personal financial management at Centonomy. You're welcome to the show, Maureen. Thank you so much, Ingrid, for having me. And thank you very much for coming to talk to us about this very, very important topic on relationships mm -hmm. and money because. Maureen, we all have to agree, and you mm. had it in the intro, mm. a lot of relationships fail or rather have a lot of friction because of failure to understand mm -hmm. how to relate better when it mm -hmm. comes to money. Mm -hmm. Now, usually on the show, we like to pick the voice of the ordinary Kenyan to understand how much they know on the topic. Before we even get into the whole conversation, let's take a quick look. To disclose your, your, the, the, amount, the amount of money that you make, uh, your... Iyo siyo muhimu, haifai, haifai. Kwa sababu we mwenye, we mwenye ume wana vile kuna endelea, mungine anaenda huku wana kuuza, wana kuja, wana, wana uawa, wana malizwa. Yani ule anaweza kuwa, yani ya mpendele, yani vizuri. Kwa sababu ya hile kitu ukonayo. Najuu wezi juu alo ya mtu hiko na mnagani, siyo? Uleza muambia, unatengeneza pesa fulani, kisha kumalize after kupata zile pesa. When you get into a relationship, I believe... Uh the key uh, uh, cause of a relationship are uh, communication, honesty, and trust. So in terms of honesty, I feel like you shouldn't exactly give the exact amount, but unapeana range. Sasa mwanamuke anapadi a disclose kwa buwanaake ile pesa mepata kwa siku. Muze apai ku disclose kabisa. Kwa sababu, akidisiklozi ni kwa huya mambile pesa napata. Ata mpangia anjama, vila atachukua yyo pesa. Na mwanamuka akipata pesa kukuliko, we mwanaume. Iyo sirikali yako, inakuanga mipinduliwa. If you are a couple, you are a partnership. So, the full disclosure. Inafaa juwa na kapa moja. Ya, unajua, ukikuje uweke yako kwa meza, na mine uweke yangu kwa meza. Tunapigia budget. Ukifcha yako labdo na kula nambu gingine uko inje. So I think it's important to be transparent to your spouse. Because if the relationship is not founded on trust, then what are you doing together? So I think it's very important to disclose. We're in a time where men, uh, uh, relationships are just splitting bills. But uh, where the woman will take care of the household. Uh, responsib uh, who takes care, uh, I mean pay like the house help, uh, cater for the kitchen, make sure the family is fed and the man should take care of the bigger bills like uh, kids school fees, the rent, electricity. Lakini pia moja akiwa chini mwingina na saidia. Kama wote wako kazi, kila mtu wanafanya biashara, kila mtu wanafanya kazi, wanaingiza pesa, wanafaa wagawane majukumu. Kama wanafaa wagawane majukumu, majukumu lakini kama mwanamke hapana fanya kazi basi mzee anafaa bebe hiyo majukumu hiyo majukumu yote wanafaa wagawane majukumu kulingana na income ya kila mtu unajua ikikuwa sasa hiyo itikadi ikue kwamba wagawane 50-50 sasa ita, itabidi sasa ikue sasa wako the same strength unaona kwangu naonelea kwamba majukumu mengine yakue ni ya mwanaume tu ndio ndio sababu the reason eh? ni kwamba mwanamke ulimuleta ulimuo kamuleta na kuna vitu zingine aswa za kinyumbani ambazo wafai kulaumu kwamba anafaa kuwa na nguvu zake for me the husband should take full responsibility of everything however eh, i'm his helper so i just chip in to help so it can't be 50 50 he's the one shouldering the percentage of the bills that is high 
but I will step in to help because I am his helper. I beg to differ, it cannot be 50-50 or left to one person, because say if the guy earns more than the lady, he can take a big chunk of the bills, okay? So it's, it's just a matter of agreeing the bills that we have and how much can you chip in. But some guys are actually okay to tick up the whole bill, but it has to be agreed upon and not necessarily going 50-50. Just what works for the family. It's no problem. If you've talked about your finances and you, and you trust each other, I feel like, yes, you can have your own personal account and maybe a joint account to maybe put in money that, uh, you know, for um, hobbies. If you like to travel, then of course each one will, uh, everyone will come in and chip in so that you're able to finance your hobbies and other lifestyles. Ndiyo, naweza kufungua joint account. Lakini bado niwe na yangu, mimi yangu kivyangu, naye akuwe na yake vikivyake ni sawa. Lakini sasa for instance kama kuna biashara, najua sasa lazima mfungue bank account. Definitely, he's my best friend, so anything I have he has to know about it. Anything he has, I have to know about it. So I don't have a problem with a joint account with him. I would if uh, it's if it's brought on the table, like it's like uh, something that we have to do together. But yeah, I mean, if it's it's upon discussion and it's found that we need to have one, I would agree. But if it's not a necessity, I'll definitely want to keep my finances to myself. Ah, apo 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 nakata. Now Maureen, you've heard what the Kenyan thinks on, you know, relating and money. Yes. But to fully understand, why do you think there's usually a lot of misunderstanding mm -hmm. and just failure to get along when it comes to couples and money? When you don't talk about money from the onset, and I'm talking about onset is during the dating fees, when you jump the broom, it will definitely cause friction. I need to know everything about you. You know that you're told, go find out their background. Uh, you need to know um, if he's somebody who knows how to manage their anger, probably get to, li to know a little bit about their personality, get to know where they're headed to. Talk about money as well, yes, because understanding their perspective and their perception on money and how to manage money is very key because that will also dictate on how you start putting in your place uh, in putting in place your plans for you know achieving some of the things that you'd want to because of course when you're talking about relationships you're planning to have kids yeah. some of us already are already in marriages as we speak and um, it doesn't really need to take a long process because we find ourselves just uh, one day after two weeks, we don't have clothes at, you know, yeah. you know the way people move, the traditional way of people <laughs> moving, yes. yeah? So it is important for us to start talking about money. Do I know how you spend your money? I don't know. Are you that person who's very impulsive when it comes to spending money? Are you a planner, for example? Um, do you have goals in terms of where do we want to see us as a family in the next couple of years? How much in, in, uh, assets would we have, you know, like put together or grown by a particular time? And then uh, what, what route are we going to take in order to make sure that we are getting there? And Maureen, mm. I love that you've talked about how important it is to have an honest conversation. Mm. First of all, to understand your, each other's money behaviors, yeah. to help in the planning process. Mm -hmm. But going by that concept then, mm -hmm. what would you say of a situation whereby maybe I'm planning on, you know, spending the rest of my life with mm -hmm. this gentleman, yeah. but in the process while trying to figure out their money habits, mm -hmm. I realize there's a very, very big disconnect when it comes to compatibility. Mm -hmm. So for example, maybe I'm the frugal type who yeah. counts every penny, yes. whereas this gentleman is the type who anything they pass, they just must have it. And you know, for someone who's frugal, mm -hmm. that's almost a trigger mm -hmm. of, no, this person is going to run us into debt. So in a situation where there's a lack of compatibility, would you say that should be a deal breaker? How would you say that should be handled? Why are you talking about my marriage? <laughs> Why are you bringing it in the open? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going on in college. I know, because that's exactly my relationship. Um, and I'm saying this with a lot of uh, respect to my husband. Absolutely. And I have permission to talk about this. Uh, mm -hmm. I know he's supporting me, whatever he is. So he's that kind of person. Right. He's very impartial with money. Right. He comes from a community whereby we need to look nice. So image for us is key, mm -hmm. yeah? Of course, he's tall, dark, and handsome. I'm not here to talk about him anyway. So the idea is he, I have to look good, right. and to him it really matters. So he always have money, some extra money, and plan money in his wallet. And I think it's a very risky thing because you just don't know how much this money would actually, res um, what is it called, result to, or rather wh how much this money will actually give you leverage on in terms of investing because right. when you're talking about money at Centoma, it's about the small money mm -hmm. it's not about the big monies and i remember there are times he would actually conf would don't actually clash because it always tell me okay of course there's fuel in your car uh, you've carried lunch but he's like you know you need to have some money in the pocket just have money for emergency and being a woman what happens because i'm a woman i will see something nice I will definitely go and buy. And this is money that is unplanned for. And Ingrid, let me tell you, it's the small monies. I know there's a lesson with, when you're taking through, I train uh, young adults on money management as well, but on the entrepreneurship part. But I understand the fact that if you started saving in your early 20s, even 150 shillings a day, Kenyan shillings a day, that's, that's, that's of course coffee for you. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you could actually buy a, a few sachets, go and make your coffee, brew the coffee from the house. But if you decided to spend that money in a um, very nice coffee house, because we have quite a couple mm -hmm. in, in town nowadays, and in all these estates, mm -hmm. and if you decide to spend that kind of money every day, of course, that money will go down your drain, go down your digestive system and whatever. But if you decided to put this money in an account that's giving you a return, a certain amount of money, you will definitely build something. In a couple of years, you'll have about a million. Mm -hmm. And a million could actually give you, would actually give you some leverage when it comes to knowing where you are in terms of assets or liquid cash. So it is important for you to understand. Does my couple, does my spouse love spending money too much? Mm. Is, that, is, my other, uh, uh, is, my, is my spouse very conservative or she's a very good planner? You need mm. to put all these things into perspective so that now you start having clear and very, very honest conversations. Mm. For example, okay, fine, I need to have that money. What do I do? Okay, Ingrid, let's sit on the table. So I know that you work and you bring some money in, you know, you, bring, you get some money after a certain period of time. I mm. also work and I also bring my money, but what do we do? We need to have pots. Mm. I describe them as pots. Of course, this money is coming to benefit the entire household. This analogy of guys saying, Pesa ya monamke, like a woman's <laughs> money is her money. Guys, if you're in a marriage, it has to stop because this money should come back home and help all of us. I'm not a marriage counselor, but that's essentially how it should happen for us to be able to just make right and correct decisions when it comes to money. So I know, Ingrid, you've worked so hard. I have worked so hard. So I definitely need to have some money just to appreciate myself. And that's where it comes to, yes, we have a couple of pots. We have an investment pot. So mm. we know probably 30% of our income, it doesn't matter how much you're earning, mm. but let's talk in terms of percentage. 30% should go into the investment pot. All right. Maybe 10% should go towards um, meeting our big budgets, right. rent, our food, mm. and then probably 5% should go towards probably the children. So we're looking at uh, probably tuition fees. So this is money that you save every month. Mm. And you say, okay, fine, uh, because I've been working so hard and I know how I spend money, then take 20%. So give each other an allowance. Then whatever you do with that allowance, it's none of my problem because we've already factored in all the things that are very important when it comes to mm. financial planning. So we have an investment, our children are catered for, we have met our big tickets, and we are good. But Maureen, mm -hmm. now you're saying things that are just not pleasing everyone. You're just trying to annoy <laughs> people by saying, like, money should not be split. It yes. should be put in a pot. Because you know how it is in the yes, African yes. setting, and mm -hmm. we're going to get into that. Yes, yes. But as we talk mm -hmm. about full disclosure, mm -hmm. and I ask you this very cautiously, because I don't want to join you in annoying our audience <laughs> back home. She's so, so Maureen, <laughs> when we're talking about full disclosure, yeah. are you also telling me that as a couple in a relationship, mm -hmm we should have a clear understanding of 
every single shilling that each other earns. Absolutely. And by that I mean Maureen, my husband should know every single penny I earn in my salary, including my side gigs, including mm. like, and vice versa. Absolutely, Ingrid. If you're in a relationship and a healthy relationship, do you know why marriages break or, or relationships break because of money? It's because guys do not want to talk about it. So you need to be very honest. This is how much I'm earning. I'm not saying that you put all this money in one account. Mm. Because it is important for me to know how much you're earning and how much the other party is also earning. And, um, and I know it's, it's... Why do we start off a marriage from a point of... Or a relationship from, from a point of, you know, I will not tell you how much I earn. Don't you think that is dishonest? Oh, absolutely. And you cannot build a relationship on dishonesty. I'm not saying because you're earning all that money, then we should give you all the responsibilities or because you're earning so much money, so mm -hmm. you should take up all the responsibilities. That is why we are having that honest discussion, right? So you are seated on the table and you're talking about 30% of what you're earning. If you're earning 100 and I'm earning probably 10,000 Kenyan shillings, that means 30% of what you're earning should go towards. Mm. And my 30% will also contribute. Yeah, because it's not about, and I'm glad and I'm excited that now housewives are going to be paid because right, that's a full-time right. job. But I'm one of those people who was very excited because trust me, I'm a mother. And I'm working at the same time. Nice. It's a lot of it work. It actually is a full and I'm time job. And I'm, remember you asked me in the morning if my day, I, I feel like it's already it's 5, 5 p.m. For me it's 5 p.m. And I think... The amount of things exactly, you've achieved is like exactly, a full day. Yes. Even that woman who sits in the home needs to get an allowance. Mm -hmm. If you're getting an allowance, what are you doing without money? Is it about just taking care of yourself? Because there's a tomorrow. Right. Who knows? I won't have as much energy as I have right now to do... to hustle around or work so hard to make more money. Mm. So start thinking, once you start setting your mindset in that particular direction, trust me, you'll get it sorted. So we are saying, we're not saying that, oh, because you're making so much money, so it is your money that we're going to use. It is our money. Right. Because it's coming home and it's supposed to benefit everybody, including your children. And I'm glad you've talked about the fact mm. that Full disclosure doesn't automatically mean that, oh, now we're going to have to form one account. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to pick your mind on a joint bank account. Mm -hmm. Because there's some couples who actually do this, and mm -hmm. it works for them. Mm -hmm. But in a situation whereby, like you said, you and your husband, mm -hmm. where it's so opposite in the spending habits, yes. what's your take on couples actually having a joint bank, bank account? And what should even inform this decision? If it works for you, Ingrid, please, guys, go ahead and have one joint account. If it doesn't work for you, it is okay. But Because, again, sometimes putting monies in one basket can mm. be a bit, little bit risky, yes? So depending on how you plan and work it out as a team, yes? If you feel like the, the joint account works for you, go ahead and have it. But you can still be very honest with one another and have two separate accounts. Because, again, having money, having one bank account can be very risky. But, again, if you have that one account, what you need to do is... We have what we call standing orders and financial institutions can actually help you with that. So if you know that this money is supposed to go towards uh, a certain investment or towards a certain need, you can easily just work that out with your bank. And the moment money hits the account, everything else is sorted out. Then you're left with what you need to have in the account. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, just to even speak broadly, and the reason I ask this mm -hmm. is just generally, mm -hmm. normally in any relationship, even the adjustment mm -hmm. to live together is usually not an easy one, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can have a situation of someone who just throws clothes on the ground. Yeah. And me, I'm OCD. <laughs> I don't even want to see a pin on the ground. Yes. You get It's a whole adjustment to the it living is. situation. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask about certain money habits mm -hmm that ideally should be avoided in a relationship mm -hmm. that should be a form of co that would really really lead to conflict right mm -hmm. so you've already pointed out the fact that there should be an understanding there should be a certain level of compatibility you need but what are some of those habits that are just a no that if this is what um, happens in a relationship it's ideally going to be a deal breaker and the reason i ask this is mm -hmm. for example in relationships i'll say cheating there mm -hmm. are certain things that are just a no that if it happens mm -hmm. it's going to ruin the relationship mm -hmm. what would you say that is for money now look at marriage as a business partnership so here i am marriage is a partnership right so just like a business partnership so we've registered a company it's me and my husband right. then we decide this is the service you're going to be providing. But however, at some point, you decide, okay, fine. Um, there's a deal I had somewhere, and I don't think I need to inf inform my partner. Right. And when the money comes in, I won't even tell her because it was my 
business. I'm, it was my contact. What do you think happens when your business partner finds out that you have been actually transacting or running businesses or getting deals without behind their back? Mm. That will definitely break the marriage, right? Or the business partnership. Right. Number two, money comes in because uh, I'm a good salesperson and my partner is very good at operations. So mine is just to go out, get all the clients, get the money. But I never inform my, client, my partner that, by the way, we got a deal with Metropole, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or we got a deal with so and so, so or Centonomy. Right. So this is how much I'm going to be making. So you realize that huh? this person is buying equipment in the office and they're not telling you where the money is coming from. Right. How will that make you feel as a yeah. partner? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So money is just coming in. So there's no honesty at that particular point. Or the money comes in, there's a lot of money in the account, and both of you are signatories. But Every time you get, go to check on your account, you're like, okay, fine. I remember we drew some money for a particular project, but this money has been redirected elsewhere. And that's exactly how marriage works, yes? You need to be very open with every money that comes in. Number two, need, you need to have a plan mm -hmm. and a goal. Ingrid, trust me, anytime there is no goal or you do not direct, give, you need to give your money a route. You need to direct your money but not the other way around because right. we have formed, we have gotten to a place where money controls us. You should not be controlled by money. You should be controlling your money. So once you get the money, you need to know where the money is going to. So you call your spouse and they're like, hey, honey, even if you have had an issue, mm. decide to call him the, by their name or you wear kuja hapa, that's fine, but you need to sit down. Call and him. Just, <laughs> yes. Just we have this money and remember we were supposed to pay for example we need we have an investment um and we're we not talking about you know when people hear this word investment it kind of sounds like a very huge yes but when you're talking about saving we're talking about holidays do you go for holidays as a family honestly mm -hmm. because you can't wake up one morning and like you want to go to mombasa and right. you've not been planning for it how do you you'll find yourself spending school fees money and i'm very passionate about this yes so guys go for holidays <laughs> Take that 100 shillings at the beginning of the year, open a savings account for what? For holidays. You're going to Mombasa. So you're, by the time December comes, you've already planned yourself. You go for a holiday without hassle. And you know January is coming, so you know very well that there's an account for tuition fees. So the idea is make sure you plan together as a team. The other habit is um, buying, hey guys, and I know this happens a lot to ladies. Like if you really want your marriage to work, yes, even if your husband or your spouse is this kind of person, we have a habit of buying property and we write it under our name. And they're like, you know, my husband will never know about it. And uh, you start having a secret account. Yes. Then you're actually creating, you're actually creating, what is it called? You're allowing, or rather you're building a found. in fact, that's a word, you're building a foundation for, for divorce. Mm. You're actually building a foundation for divorce because you should get in with your mind but, now this is for married counselors, after some time, after you realize your spouse, because I know this might come up, oh, my spouse is this kind of person, but where is your mindset as a person? If you're already in that kind of a relationship where you don't talk about money, because it happens. Right. There are quite a number of people yes. who never talk about money, but here I am, I've, got it, I've gained the knowledge, then work on your money. And not with an intention of, I want to teach him a lesson, mm. no, with the intention of, I want to make sure that I secure my children's education and to make sure by the time I'm retiring, I don't have to beg my children or make my, turn my children into a retirement plan. Guys, this needs to stop. Right. Our children, taking your child to school is your obligation. Making sure that they finish university, it is your obligation, not your child. Mm. So there's no way they're going to pay you back for what you should have done from in the first place. So guys, let's just plan, talk about it. When you're spending money, please let your spouse know. A few years back, a few years back, Ingrid, because through the gospel of St. my right. life has been transformed. Right. I'm that kind of person who would buy a shoe, and I get back home, and I'm like, I was gifted by a friend, but I know very well <laughs> you that, bought I, that I, shoe. I bought that shoe. <laughs> and it is so wrong, because you your found it means your relationship is not based on mm -hmm. trust, and every relationship should be based on that. And if you're at a point of if you're in a situation where that trust is not there, start talking about it. Mm. Don't push it, but talk about it. Yeah.
Now, Maureen, I knew, actually was hoping this would be a very honest and unfiltered mm -hmm. conversation because mm -hmm. believe it or not, these many things in relationships mm -hmm. are a real thing and I love your honest mm -hmm. feedback. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to take a very, very quick break at this point. And remember, if you're our audience back home, you can also be a part of this conversation by sending your feedback, questions, comments to our social media handles at Metropole TV KE on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We'll be right back. <laughs> 